Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of Smurfy Den Interviews. Now several months ago, I already interviewed a Tugs documentary director, and now here we are with another director who's making his official filmmaking debut, this time covering on the impact of the Thomas the Tank Engine internet fandom. So let's take a look at the trailer. Weird people, they do something no one else is doing, and they take a risk, they go against the grain, and that's how some beautiful things happen. Thomas is an escape. It's an emotional outlet. It invites you to be creative. Not just for yourself, but also to share that creativity with other people. and make a community out of it. Well, I'm saying to the fans, stay unlikely. Hmm, now there is something familiar about that voice, but what a way to end a trailer with a bang! So I recommend giving a documentary a watch once it's out. So for now, I would like to introduce you to the director of an unlikely fandom, Brandon Carty. Hi, so I am Brandon Carty, uh, uh, director and producer of an unlikely fandom, The Impact of Thomas the Tank Engine, the world's first feature-length documentary on the Thomas the Tank Engine fandom, and hopefully not the last. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of story to tell. Fascinating. Now let's hear how you can recall your first memories of Thomas as a child. My first memories of Thomas was the shot from Rusty to the Rescue with, you know, the moon in the background and they're going over the bridge. I saw that on the Island Song, which was featured on the Thomas Meets the Queen VHS, which is a convoluted answer to say the Thomas Meets the Queen VHS was my earliest memory. And it's actually, uh, it's 1999, and my mom actually recorded that moment on video, and that's how I remember it. And it, it is in the documentary. It's a, but, So, yeah, that's my first memory is seeing that shot and it, it's just like it's captivating and even in the video you can like see me like wide-eyed and like oh my god this is great what a way to start your adventure with thomas and the next question is what inspired you into filmmaking so yeah my parents showed me jaws that was just kind of the gateway into filmmaking i'm like i want to do that for the rest of my life and of course i was already using my parents hi8 camera to you know film thomas episodes with my own toys so it just kind of like naturally worked out that i would be a filmmaker I think. Hmm, neat. That's kind of like me when it comes to playing with Thomas toys and video cameras these days. Anyway, let's move on to the next question. Do you have any recollections of your early years in the Thomas Internet fandom? Early on, I joined the fandom in 2006, and this was kind of when it was on TV.com. And YouTube had just kind of started, so people were slowly transitioning away from TV over to YouTube. And I remember going on like TV.com forums and like speculating about Magic Road 2, the new Jack in the Pack episodes which were coming out, season 10, who's Fearless Freddy, who's, you know, this and that. And it, it was just a much different time because we were all, we all of us were young. I mean, of course there were older people, you know, like the, the, the Sith people, you know, who are already in, you know, their teens and 20s. But, you know, early on, like I was already making friends with these people. My parents didn't know about it. And then when they found out, they were really concerned, like, oh, you're talking to people on the internet. That's weird. Um, yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to think it all worked out, you know? Oh my gosh. Don't we all felt it that way when it comes to meeting new friends on the internet, nor knowing what our parents would think? Other than that, sounds like a nostalgic story. And yes, I do remember going to TV.com around the time Thomas Series 8 was out, long before joining in. Anyways, let's discuss the main subject. Can you tell us what an unlikely fandom is all about? And why opting Kickstarter as a way to successfully gain some funds? So an unlikely fandom is just about the fandom. It, it's about the fandom, which is unlikely. Uh, but no, really, it's about how a bunch of people spread all across the world ended up just finding each other because they all like the same kid show. And it, it was just so cool to hear everyone's perspective on why they love it 
and why they continue to stay like involved with you know the fandom and, and making content and this that and you know whatever and it's it's just been a great ride and I've, I've met a lot of great people you know people who worked on the show people who you know are diehard fans who i didn't even know before making this film and yeah it's, it's just a documentary about the love of thomas that that's it like it's it's not not this expose it's not this you know whatever it's it literally is just a love letter to thomas the tank engine from a bunch of guys and girls who just still love it even into their 20s and 30s and so we we yeah we raised fourteen thousand dollars through kickstarter and that was great because i already shot like a good portion of the film on my own but i was like you know what i need more money we want to go to the uk and you know, we need twenty five hundred dollars let's make money off of this you know let's 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 make money and so we can go make this better because it originally it was just the u.s fans and i was like that i don't know if that's telling the full story so we did the kickstarter we, we beat it and then you know COVID happened and we got to shut down and we had to figure things out you know as as they happened and how do we incorporate you know the UK, the Australia. So we hired people. We hired Nick Jones from the Thomas the Tank Engine Man documentary to be our UK unit, and got some various freelancers in Australia. And it it, it just it just all worked out. Sounds like it will be a really big movie, all about Thomas fans. <laughs> anyway, do you have any favorite moments while making the documentary? My favorite moment making the documentary. Um, I can't answer that question right now. But I know when you see the film, you'll probably understand exactly what my favorite moment was. But I, I can't, I can't answer that question right now. Second favorite, maybe, um, was doing this like sort of group shot around Strasburg Thomas, uh, even though we kind of weren't supposed to. <laughs> Some really cool guy at Strasburg let us do that. So that I, I think that was my favorite part. My second favorite part, of course. My main favorite part. Someone come back to this in a few weeks and remind me. Uh, once the film is out, so th then you'll understand why. That's understandable, but still, that sounds great as well. Anyway, do you have any idea as to why is the documentary kept getting pushed back further from its initial release date? Yeah, the documentary kept getting pushed back because we were trying to figure out, well, how do we shoot in the UK? How do we shoot in Australia? What do we do because the world's shut down? And then uh, it was also sort of, you know, what do we do? We have this time. How do we make this the best thing we possibly can? And also, all of us work day jobs. I, I worked a nine to five and, you know, it was kind of hard to come home and still cut through the other, you know, 10 interviews I had left over because yeah, that'd be like an 80 hour work week when you got down to it of, of just editing. And I had a life or I have a life, had a, had a job and it, it just took time. And of course, we also needed to, you know, still raise our own money. You know, once we burned through the Kickstarter stuff with the UK, the rest of it had to be funded all out of pocket, some of them like licensing costs, etc. So it, we just needed time to kind of lessen the blow of each, you know, stint of the production. Well, I suppose that's pretty understandable. I mean, even I do have some real life priorities when I'm not making videos and such, and these things can take some time to shape up. That said, what have you learned from your directorial debut? What I have learned from my directorial debut is uh, very interesting. I have learned that time is never on your side. You strike while the iron's hot. If you let something sit, it will not be there when you look back at it. Never, ever stop to question it. Just, just strike while the iron's hot. Because I, I lost out on a lot of really good opportunities for the film because I sat down and pondered on it for a little too long. Now, am I still happy with the film? Of course. But I know there are things that could have been slightly better had I been more at the helm and, you know, not wandering and not having my mind somewhere else. You know, always strike while the iron's hot and ne never take your time for granted because you're, you'll never have enough time. Even now, four years later, I feel like I don't have enough time to, you know, finish the film. Oh, yes. And I am sure it is something for any new filmmaker to take any advice. And speaking of which... Have you got any words of advice for people that's new to filmmaking and the Thomas fandom? My biggest piece of advice, uh, people new to filmmaking, is, you know, make what you want. Like, don't don't wait for someone to tell you that's a good idea. If you think it's a good idea, go crazy. I, I had a few people laugh at me for, for the idea of the unlikely fandom, but I'd like to think it was worth it. You know, I, it was a great journey and a, a great time, and yeah, I... I I have no regrets, really. Um, so yeah, go, go make what you want. 
Who cares if someone doesn't think it's profitable? Who cares if someone thinks it's silly? Go go make whatever you want. That's that's the beauty of art. Uh, advice for people that are new to the Thomas fandom, keep your friends close. And, you know, you don't have to be involved in every friend group. That's hard. That, that Why would you want to do that? Uh, find your little niche and go from there, you know? There's a lot of great people out there in this fandom. You're, you're not alone. Thomas is for everyone. Hmm, absolutely. Now, one last question before we wrap things up. Would you like to bid your farewells to our audiences? So yeah, thank you, Smurfy Dan, for letting me uh, have a soapbox and sort of speak about the movie. And, you know, of course, stay unlikely. That's our, that's our little motto. I don't know if that is grammatically accurate, but we're just running with it now. And I really, really cannot wait for you guys to see the film. I think, you know, there's something for everyone in there. What, what, if you don't care about the fandom, there's some cool stuff about the show or, you know, this and that. I think it's a film for everyone, and I am so blessed and honored to have been able to do it with everyone's support. So, yeah, stay unlikely, and uh, until next time. And thank you for joining us, Brandon. I wish you all the best for the success of your directorial debut. So anyway, an unlikely fandom will finally be steaming into our screens soon. And for those that will be seeing it at the premiere in New York City, hope you all have a smashing time too. So that's pretty much wrapping up another interview, and until then, this is Murphy Dan signing off, and stay unlikely! <laughs>